I can't believe we're witnessing this historic occasion. Those were the words of Ireland captain Nee Briggs, who was co-commentating on Friday night's historic match between the Barbarian women and Munster women at Thoman Park. The 57 times capped Ireland international is probably in one of the best positions to make such a statement and to establish the significance of what was taking place on the hallowed turf of the Limerick venue. Briggs had had a difficult season. She missed out on this year's Six Nations with a hamstring injury, only to recover from it in time for the World Cup before being struck with an Achilles injury which ruled her out of the tournament. Not only did she have to watch on from the sidelines during the Six Nations in the World Cup but she also missed out on being involved for Munster in their match against the Babas on Friday night. Sir for Briggs to portray her absolute joy, when saying those words, despite not being involved, really makes her point hit home. This game was huge. Women's rugby has come a long way in the last 18 months. We have seen a successful World Cup take place in Ireland, a tournament which broke records for TV audiences. Crowds, especially in France, have increased dramatically, as finally, the attractiveness of the game is being acknowledged by not just general rugby supporters but perhaps more importantly, the media. So as the very first women's barbarians side took to the field on Friday night, one could not shake the feeling that what we were witnessing was truly special. But this game was special in more than the fact this was the first women's barbarians game, watching first-hand the camaraderie, dedication and sheer joy displayed by both sets of players was a joy to behold, the true values of rugby. I was lucky enough to be part of a special team who had the opportunity to exclusively broadcast both games which took place on Friday night and as a result, I got to spend a decent amount of time with the players and management in the build-up to the game. For the Barbarians, who beat Munster 190 on the night, they only had one day of training during the week, a morning and afternoon session on at the grounds of Old Crescent RFC in Limerick. This took place on Thursday, one day before the match. The players only got together on Wednesday. Final preparations underway for at Barbarian. FC ahead of tomorrow's historic match pick.twitter.com 8vkjqdhgxz Sean McMahon at Sean McMahon 89 November 9, 2017 Now, this is why I describe what took place as special in numerous ways. Watching the excitement of the players and management on the sideline of their training session on Thursday gave me a glimpse into what this meant to the squad. It was a beautiful balance of professionalism, the desire to get their systems in place and to produce a performance befitting of the shirt on Friday night, but perhaps more importantly, it was fun. Some drop balls were met with reassuring encouragement, perfectly executed set-piece moves were greeted with high fives and congratulations and of course, the practicing of some classic Barbarians moves led to some exuberant scenes. So when I spoke to the Barbarians head coach and Wasps director of rugby, Giselle Mather, immediately after their session, it was plain to see how much this game meant not only to her, but also to her players. The Barbarians has come on from the back of the World Cup. But, to actually make it happened, the skill level that was on show in the World Cup and the interest of people watching the games. There was 2.4 million engagement watching the tournament, there were hundreds of thousands watching the games on TV. From that, comes this, which takes the momentum and impetus and the interest in it has been fantastic. The shirt presentation we just had, that experience was just magical for the players and a lot of the girls there, the caps we have in the side, it's wonderful for them to be the first in the shirts because they've been the ones who have moved women's rugby to where it was to where it is now. They're launching what may well come in the future and for the players to be a part of that is really special. Fiona Coughlin, who captained the Barbarians, came out of retirement just for this game, which just shows the significance of what this means for women's rugby. Yeah an email came through and I didn't really think about it, I just accepted it immediately and then it was afterwards I was like okay, I haven't played in a while so a little bit of nervousness set in but now when you're in camp it's just hugely exciting the dedication and enthusiasm shown by the players not only applies to the Barbarians but to Munster as well. Take Valerie Power for example, the Shannon RFC club woman started for Munster on Friday night and had the unenviable job of juggling her postdoctoral research commitments at the University of Limerick and coaching the university's women's rugby side who played in Waterford on Wednesday night all the while preparing for a massive fixture against the Barbarians on Friday. Anna Kaplis had to rush to Thomond Park as she had a class to teach on Friday afternoon, just hours before kick-off against the Barbarians. These are just two examples of the sheer dedication shown by women rugby players in this country to do what they love. 
so as the column inches are filled with arbitrary opinions on residency rules and whether a certain player has the right to represent a country which he has invested his life in. It's refreshing to return to the core and true values of rugby which were in abundance on Friday night and the week preceding it. So Friday night came and what was witnessed was the perfect example of those values. Despite the monsoon-like conditions which had a serious effect on the crowd in attendance, both sides put in a performance producing skill, resolve and an unrelenting desire to win. Georgina Robertson's try at the end of the game which began in the Barbarian's own half will go down as one of the best tries in Barbarian's history, and it was the perfect way to remember a memorable night. I'm absolutely buzzing that they didnt resort to type, they stuck with the Barbarian way, as you say regardless of the conditions. But it's the experience, the whole thing and I see it as a springboard for the women's barbarians to kick on, head coach Mather told Pundit Arena after the game. Hopefully there will be 34 games per year of the girls in the barbarians' shirts and it becomes a new little family for women's rugby where you earn the right to become a barbarian, you get invited to play and you get to play the kind of rugby which these girls have started off. But it wasnt just the women's game which provided a timely reminder of why we love this sport. Seeing the likes of John Muldoon, Quinn Roo and Donica O'Callaghan waxing lyrical about what it means to them personally to wear the Babas shirt was refreshing, as much as their relaxed demeanour after the game, none of the pressure that is associated with a professional environment, just complete happiness. Such a chilled out, relaxed post-match with these at Barbarian. FC lads Barberton pick.twitter.com 73 by 8 loci, Sean McMahon at Sean. McMahon 89 November 10, 2017 So as we enter into the midst of the November internationals and the inevitable furore that comes along with it, let's not forget what took place on Friday, as not only was it another huge step for women's rugby but it was also a much-needed nudge for us to remember why this is the sport we hold so dear.